Hello again, everybody. So in this video, which will also be very short, I will show you how we can turn what we have just learned into hypothesis tests. So we will consider hypotheses of the form beta i equals a given value, for example, beta i equals zero. And I will show you how we can decide to either accept or reject this hypothesis. So hypothesis tests are very similar to confidence intervals. In a sense, we have just said this quantity is t distributed and typically lies in this interval. If it lies out there, we must have been really unlucky. So for hypothesis test, we redefine t a bit and instead plug in here the value we are testing for. So let's say we test the hypothesis beta i equals some value b against the alternative, they are different. And then t that's now a bit different from the previous t, we define beta i hat minus b over the old thing, so over ci i, I sigma hat squared and then the square root. And it turns out we can reuse the same value t from before, the same quantile, so t is again the 1 minus alpha over 2 quantile of the t n minus p minus 1 distribution. And it turns out we can use the rule reject h0 if and only if modulus of capital T, that is now called the test statistic, is larger than that, that's now called the critical value. And I have a written version of this for you in the notes, but here I can just explain why that is the right rule in words. So tests, we at beginner level at least only consider what's called the type 1 error. So the type 1 error is when h0 is true, the hypothesis, and the test accidentally rejects it. That's one of the two errors. The other is h1 is true and the test accepts h0. But we are not considering this, only type 1 error. So here we get to assume h0 is true, and then we need to show the probability of rejecting h0 is low. And if we assume h0 is true, then beta i is b, so that b here we can replace with an beta i, and then we have made good for my inconsistent use of notation, then we are back to this t. So that was the reason I used the same symbol, that when h0 is true, they are in fact the same. If b equals beta i, then it doesn't matter whether we write b here or beta i. Good, and under this hypothesis, we need now to show it is unlikely that the test rejects the hypothesis, and that means it's unlikely that mod t, the absolute value of t, is larger than t. But that's what we have just done in this picture. We have actually chosen the critical value t so that the probability of being larger is alpha. Alpha over 2 here, alpha over 2 there. So I write a formal proof in the notes, but the proof really comes down to look at this picture. And that's what we need for hypothesis tests. Good, so that's that part done. And in the next section, I will go ahead and show you the same thing in R and will show you how all the quantities like this one, how we can compute them from scratch in R. And also I will show you how you can find out these quantities using the built-in R functions, which already compute them for you.